Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7B Momentum Practice Problem, the two hockey players. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel, it really helps a lot. So feel free to copy the problem on your notebook so that you can follow along. The problem statement goes as follows. So we have two hockey players and they collide and get stuck together. The 84 kilograms ice skater was moving east at 4 meters per second and the 60 kilograms ice skater was moving exactly northwest, 45 degrees west of north at 3 meters per second. The question that we have to answer is, what is their final speed and direction? So as you can see, I have everything written down here in my notes. I have uh, both of the masses. I decided to call the ice skaters A and B just to keep them separated. A is going 4 meters per second east. B is going 3 meters per second west of north, uh, which basically you know, looks something like this. So whenever you have west of north, you're going to start at north, and then you're going to go west of that. So this is 45 degrees, and then this magnitude is uh, the 3 meters per second, like this. So we have both of their initial velocities, and we, uh, we don't know anything about the final you know, momentum of any of them, except that when they collide, they get stuck together, and this is going to be very important. So let's just go ahead and solve this problem. As you can see, I drafted a momentum chart over here. I do find them very helpful. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in as I move along. Uh, please notice that this problem didn't ask you explicitly to do a momentum chart, so technically you could do without it. But I strongly recommend that you, um, that you go ahead and try it out by yourself. So now let's just go ahead and start this problem. The first thing that I always like to do with these problems is to draw my uh, initial velocity vectors. Everything has to be a vector in order to go here, especially in two dimensions. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. So for A, his initial velocity, it's all east. So that is going to be a very easy vector conversion because if you're going east, that is just the x component. So that is just going to be um, 4, positive 4, and 0. Now for B, we do need to use our SOCATOA because B is not exactly on the X or Y axis, but we know our SOCATOA, so that's just an extra step that we have to do. So we do know that if this is 45 degrees, then um, our X component is going to be, um, if this is 45 degrees and this is the X component, then this is going to be sine of 45, and then this is going to be cosine of 45. So let's just go ahead and multiply those two numbers. 3 sine of 45, 2.12, and 3 cosine of 45 is going to be exactly the same, 2.12. Now, the thing that we need to be aware of is that he, uh, this B person is going a little bit to the west and a little bit north. West means uh, the negative x-axis, so we actually need to put a negative sign in here. We need to be very mindful of this because uh, we just, whenever you have your vectors, you do need to be able to distinguish between east and west because now you don't have the coordinates anymore. So in order to be very explicit about that, we do need a negative sign here whenever you're going west. Now he's also going a little bit to the north, but north is positive, so um, this is already okay. And now we have both of our initial velocities. So the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is multiply them, um, their masses in order to get their initial momentums so that we can start building this up. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the initial momentum for A is just mass A, velocity initial A. So that is just going to be um, 84 times 4, 0. So that is going to be 84 times 4 is equal to 336. X axis 0, 84 times 0 is equal to 0. And um, this is kilograms, meters divided by seconds. Now for B, we're just going to go ahead and do exactly the same. So MB, B initial for B. So B's mass is 60 kilograms, so this is 60 
negative 2.12, 2.12. So let's just go ahead and multiply that. That is 60 times 2.12. Uh, that is negative 127.2 and positive 127.2 um, kilograms meters divided by seconds. There we go. So now we have our initial momentums. Let's just go ahead and write those down. Uh, so for A, we have 336, 0. Then for B, we have negative 127.2, positive 127.2, like this. So if I draw my vectors, then that's just going to be an arrow going uh, right, and then an arrow going northwest. There we go. So now we have everything that we need to figure out what goes here because the rules of a momentum chart are that all of the rows, have, all of the columns have to add up and all of the rows have to add up. So because we have two out of three in a column, we can just basically finish the column. Uh, A plus B has to be equal to total. So this is going to be 336 minus 127.2. That is uh, 208.8 positive on the x-axis and then negative is 0 plus 127.2 that is 127.2 like this so this is positive and positive so this is going to be in an arrow going northeast so let's just go ahead and draw a northeast arrow like this now the next thing that we have to do is go ahead and figure out what goes over here so remember this part of a momentum chart is very special because it relates to external forces and the uh, overall impulse that the system is feeling. Now in this particular case we are working on ice which means that um, well we specifically designed this problem to be on ice so that you guys wouldn't have to worry about any friction forces you know any losses due to friction and we never care about air friction at all so, and the problem doesn't really mention anything that uh, would indicate that there is an external force going on. So because there is no indication of any external forces, we're going to go ahead and say that there aren't any. And that is zero and zero in vector form. So now all of the rows have to add up. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this row because I'm adding something um, plus zero, then I'm just basically going to copy this over here. So let's just go ahead and do that. Like this. So now we need to figure out um, what goes over here. And this is where the stuck together needs to make sense. So when two objects get stuck together, a lot of students think that this means that they have the exact same momentum. And a lot of students, what they would do is just take this arrow, split it in half, and then just go half and half, half A, half B, and they add up. However, this is not the case. When two objects uh, get stuck together, they have the same final velocity, but not the same final momentum. So let's just go ahead and uh, B final of A is equal to B final of B because they get stuck together. However, uh, the final momentum of A is not equal to the final momentum of B and this is something that students get confused a lot. Uh, objects getting stuck together means that their velocities are the same. It does not mean that they have the same momentum. They will only have the same momentum if their masses were exactly the same because momentum is mass times velocity. So two objects having the same velocity does not necessarily mean that they have the same momentum. Um, so you just have to keep those concepts separating. Having the same velocity does not mean that you have the same momentum. But, but they do have the same velocity. Now another thing that's going to be useful in order to complete this problem is remembering that on a momentum chart all of the rows and all of the columns represent a, an equation that we can just write out in equation form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this column over here and I'm going to go ahead and just write it down. That's all I'm going to do. 
So this block over here is P final of A. So P final of A plus this block over here, which is P final of B, P final of B, and they have to add up to P final total. So this is just the equation that this column represents. Now, I'm just going to substitute for MB, MB here, MB here, and MB here. So this is mass of A, B final, plus mass of B for this one, B final. And this has to be equal, instead of doing MB, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this number because we already have P final total. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. 208.8, 127.2, like this. Now please notice that instead of doing final A and final B, because they are exactly the same, um, I decided that it wasn't worth it to distinguish between them, so I'm just going to go ahead and say B final. It is exactly the same velocity, and this is the velocity that we're looking for, so I just skipped that step, um, and it's just going to be the same B final. So let's just go ahead and um, substitute these numbers and then just factorize. So B final MA is 84, MB is 60, and then 208.8, 127.2. And then I just need to, B final is equal to 208.8 divided by 84 plus 60, that's going to be equal to 144, 127.2 divided by 144. So B final is equal to 208.8, so that is, oh, uh, divided by 144, 1.45. And on the y-axis, 127.2 divided by 144, that is equal to 0 0.88 meters per second. And this is the final velocity. Now, the instructions themselves, so at this point we found the final velocity, however, the instructions themselves uh, were very explicit in that they wanted this final velocity to be given in form of uh, speed and direction. So the only thing that we're going to do at this problem, at this part, at this point, I'm sorry, the problem is basically done. We just have to use Pythagoras in order to find magnitude and angle. So as you know, uh, I'm just going to use uh, Pythagoras theorem. So I'm just going to go ahead and do um, 1.45 squared plus 0 0.88 squared close parenthesis, give me the square root of that. So that is going to be uh, 1.69 meters per second. And for the angle, I'm just going to go ahead and do tangent inverse of y, which is 0 0.88, divided by 1.45. And that is going to be equal to 31 degrees north of east final answer. So this is the final answer to our problem. At this point the quiz is done. We've done everything that you know we were asked to do. However, I do have an incomplete momentum chart. So even though at this point the problem has been solved completely, I do think that you know it's always good practice to know how to complete momentum charts because you might have as well you know been asked to do a complete momentum chart. So let's just go ahead and complete this momentum chart. I have the final velocity for both A and B. So in order to find final momentum, all I'm going to do is multiply mass of A times final velocity of A. So that is just going to be 84 uh, times 1.45. That is 121.8. And now 84 times 0 0.88. That is 73.92. Now I'm going to multiply mass of B times final velocity of B, 1.45 times um, 60, that's going to be 87, uh, 0 0.88 times 60, that's going to be 52.8, and let's just see if they add up, 121.8 plus 87, 
yes, they are up. And 73.92 plus 52.8, yes, everything adds up uh, quite nicely. That means our problem has been well done. So let's just go ahead and, you know, put this arrows, this plus this has to be equal to this. And now in order to figure this out, uh, we do know that delta is equal to final minus initial. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So final is 121.8, oh, 121.8 minus 336, and that is negative 214.2. Uh, and now, fi oh, final minus initial, 73 minus zero, that is 73.92. So this is um, something, you know, sort of like this. Now I could do the exact same thing, final minus initial, final minus initial, but because this has to add up and they have to add up to zero, then you just know that this arrow is just going to be the exact opposite of this one. So this is 214.2 and negative 73.92. Let's just go ahead and confirm that real fast, you know, 87 minus minus 127.2 there we go so yeah i could have done the exact same method but just having this column was way easier so anyway this this completes the momentum chart so i hope this problem was very useful to you in your studies if you found it useful please leave a like and subscribe it helps this channel a lot and i will see you guys on the next video